Hey folks, my name is Gerald, I'm known as Viper Tech on the forums. I like to fly RC planes and I like to do it on the cheap. So I like to fly with the Dollar Tree foam board planes. I have a couple other ones, but uh, mainly like to mess around with building those kind of planes. What do you do with a wrecked engine, a uh, wrecked motor I should say? Well, this video I want to take the time to take a crashed engine, this one right here. Uh, just recently put this one in the ground hard and I want to make the repairs to it. So I'm going to show you how to take this thing apart and make some repairs. So I'm going to redo this motor and show you some problems that it has because not only is this bent but there's more damage inside. It actually from the impact has damaged the front motor bearing. So we're going to we're going to address that problem and we're going to put a different shaft in it. I'll show you how it's done. Okay guys, so I have the motor rigged up here on the ESC and I'm going to use the servo tester to, um, to test the motor out so you can actually listen to it and hear it. Um, and this will work for any engine that you have. Uh, basically, you use your servo tester um, on the outputs and uh, I don't know how well that's going to come out on this camera. It's hard to see it. Basically you have three outputs for it with a servo would plug in and on this side you plug your ESC and power in. All you have to do to run it as a, uh, a motor tester is just plug in on the three outlet side. Of course your signal to signal, ground to ground, power to power. Um, and it will it will power the servo and it will run the same way. Now basically you want to make sure you turn your servo all the way down so your motor doesn't start. Then you should be able to go ahead and power everything up and you should be safe. The motor won't go anywhere. Made her a little music note. Now this motor is completely ready to run and just turn your servo uh, tester up and you can see she runs. Now there at, the, at that speed you probably can't see that that wobble in the shaft but it's there. I don't know how close I want to get and the sound probably going to be deafening off this thing. But yeah, that, that shaft is really vibrating. And you can't really hear too much noise, but I don't know how well these microphones will pick it up. You might be able to pick up that growl, the chattery growl it has in it. There's a bearing bad in this motor, so we're going to take care of that. Alright, so I'm going to call this. And we're going to go ahead and get into the nuts and bolts of this motor. I'll show you how to take this thing apart and look for some different issues with it and servicing it. So, let's zoom up here a little bit. Alright, to get into this motor, well first off we don't need this anymore because this is, this is bent we're not going to use it anymore. So I already had a couple of screws out, no big deal. Um, get the right Allen wrench here. And these are just held on with just Allen head bolts. We're left with the front of the motor. And what we're going to do is we want to extend the shaft through this motor. So now we're going to get this apart. And that will be accomplished by removing the back motor mount. I'm going to take this off. To the shaft. Now this has a collet on here that we can take off. And that collet it can be used to retain the shaft and um, rotor assembly. I guess you call it rotor assembly. Uh, don't lose your grub screw. I'm going that back in just a hair. So not holding just there. Okay. So pull the collet, the little guy there, and then there'll be, depending on your setup, there might be some uh, brass shims on your 
on your sh on the shaft. Not not every one of them has it. Uh, let me see if I can get a picture of that there. My fingers. You can see them there. Whoop, whoo, dummy. Okay, so there's one of them. This one actually had two on it originally. So you may not have to use them. It all depends on spacing and how how tight everything is. The big thing with with putting this hub assembly together, um, the rotor assembly with the stator, is you want it to be free moving, maybe a slight amount of M play, which M play would be um, the ability for it to move in and out in two sections. Let me try that. Urgh, okay, this is exaggerated, but you know, have some M play. Um, you yeah, feel that snap? I think it's crazy, um, but not tight. Not tight to where this is all you push together, tighten everything up. You don't want to do that. You don't want it all all smooshed, smooshed together. You want it to have some some free play there, but not too much because then it gets it gets too loose and things get weird. Okay, so once you get that off the back of it, now some of these are going to have these little tiny clips on there, and they are a royal pain in the tuchus. So anybody who knows about clips on shafts, you, you know what I'm talking about. Let me get um, meet the clips here for a minute. Show what clips look like. And that's where I keep spare stuff at. But ah, here we go. All right, here and this right here. Okay, you can either have this kind of motor clip. You see, you got the little kind of looks like an earwig. If you guys know what that is, clip or you can have your standard what we would call an e-clip okay now I use this pick tool because this pick got this nice sharp end on it and you can get in to the edge of these and, and pull them off gently okay slightly magnetic it helps um, but yeah you can you can get replacement clips if we need them just had to shop around for it all kinds of places have them so that's that. That's what ret retains the shaft normally. But you can use these collets and they work really well too. And that's what will eventually happen. This motor is going to be completely retained by the collet. Alright, so that's the first step is getting the shaft freed up, all the all the peripherals off of it, all the accessories, the, the X plate, the mount on the front, whatever you have there, get all that off of there. And then you saw me already pull this apart, but Get this pulled apart, and I'll tell you what, bigger the motor, the worse it is. So I'm going to pull it out of there, and so there you have, I would call this the stator. I may be using the wrong names here. I'm not going to worry about perfecting the name. But the stator, which this is what you call your windings, they're all in here. Um, this is where your motor bearing is located. This would be your front bearing, and you have a tail bearing. All right. And then your motor shaft, of course, is going to be in this bell housing. Okay, and this is actually retained. This has a retention uh, screw in it. There is one of them. Yeah, there we go. You can see it now. There's going to be a grub screw in there. So you're going to want to take that loose or out, whichever way you prefer. So we're going to take him out of here. <sighs> Maybe. Uh, try this one. All right, got him. And you'll find they have generally have a Loctite on them, so we're going to go and just back him out. I'm not going to take him all the way out. I got to get this shaft out. This can be where it gets fun. A couple ways of doing it. What I have found that seems to work the best is I like to use a socket, some kind of a quarter-inch drive socket works really well. And you see the inside there's a piece of aluminum housing there. Well, this can go in, pass through. And rest on the actual aluminum piece inside and gives you room inside for that shaft to come out set it down and I use a small pin punch and a lightweight tack hammer any kind of lightweight hammer will do the job and we're just going to drive it out of there very gently get it right it's out that ends the first portion of the video on the motor teardown series I'm doing 
next portion we'll be looking at motor bearings and some of the hints and tricks with those things. So stay tuned for part two.